Hello and welcome to Code Slicing and today I would like to give you a present and that comes in the form of three custom shortcuts that I cannot imagine living without and once you start using them neither will you. Obviously Xcode comes with a multitude of shortcuts that you can bind to whatever key combinations you like and this is all fantastic. By default however it's missing functionality on which I have come to depend. Specifically, I'm talking about the ability to insert a new line after or before the current line, regardless of where the cursor is within that line, and the ability to duplicate the current or currently selected lines. In order to bring these into our workflow, we must delve into the world of custom shortcuts, which are, at the heart of it, macros. Our journey begins by leaving Xcode and following the path Applications, Xcode.app, Contents, Frameworks, IDE kit.framework, resources, and opening the file IDE text key binding set.plist. Obviously, I'm assuming you've installed Xcode in your applications directory, so make any adjustments necessary in that regard. The content therein is essentially an XML representation of dictionaries within dictionaries. The outer keys define the sections where the shortcuts are grouped in the key binding preferences, and the dictionaries within those define the shortcut macros themselves. What we're going to do is paste in the code I've provided in the description for this video as the first entry in this dictionary. Rather unimaginatively, we're calling our section user defined. You're free to call it awesomely useful shortcuts if you like, or something completely different. It's really up to you. So we've got three entries. The first one I've called insert new line above current line, which is pretty much what it does. And let's look at the actions it contains. Move up, move to end of line, insert new line. And this is what I was talking about before. We're combining all these actions into a single macro to achieve the result of inserting a new line above the line we're currently on. Now, the first two macros for inserting new lines are pretty self-explanatory, but the value they deliver far outweighs the sum of their parts. Simple as they may be, you might be wondering what all the available actions are. For this, you want to take a look at a blog post by Louis Solano all the way back from 2014. As you can see, this is where I got the insert new line above and below macros, although the duplicate current line macro is different in our case, and I'll be explaining that in just a minute. As you can see at the bottom there, he has identified two headers from an Xcode class dump that are the targets for the selectors we're using in our macros. If I click on HF text representer, you can see that we've got all of those selectors we're using, and there's a pretty long list. The entry for duplicating a line is a little more complex and for good reason, because rather than just copy the line or lines we've selected, we're actually deleting them and yanking them back again twice. Confused? Allow me to explain. The delete action, not to be confused with deleting something with backspace or the delete key, actually places the deleted content into what's called a kill buffer. This is a sort of recycle bin, and that's what yank access is. It yanks it back out of this kill buffer and crucially, leaves the contents of the clipboard untouched. I'll explain why that's important in just a minute, but now we need to save our changes. You might need to sudo the save, but that's perfectly normal. Then we need to restart Xcode and head back there to see how to use these things. And we're back. So let's open up the preferences and head to the key binding section. These sections here are the ones defined in the keys in the outer dictionary in the file we've been editing. Since it's not practical to manually look through this ridiculously endless list of commands, we use the search box to search for duplicate. And there you can see our custom macro. Double click here and assign it to whatever you like. And for me, that's command D. Then we search for new line. And there are our two shiny new shortcuts. And I like to assign these to option return for new line below and shift option return for new line above. These do cause some conflicts by default, but let's assume you've sorted these out and chosen key bindings that work for you. Now we can get rid of our preferences, and just like that, we are now more productive developers. I'll demonstrate with this example view. Let's split that up into two text views so shortcuts is on a separate line. Let's imagine we're here. Normally, you go to the beginning of the line you want to duplicate, hold shift, go down, copy, and then paste in twice. That's a fair amount of work in and of itself, but we're not done yet. We now have to remove shortcuts from the first text and custom from the second. As efficient developers where every keystroke counts, this is clearly unacceptable and we can now do a lot better. Let's undo and start again, placing the cursor back in the middle of the line. Let's get rid of that space 
and cut the word shortcuts, including the obligatory punctuation. Our clipboard is now primed. Ensuring our cursor is now on the line we want to duplicate, we simply use our duplicate macro and there's our copy. Now we can select the word custom and paste. Since the duplication was using the kill buffer rather than the clipboard, we have saved ourselves a lot of work. By the way, the delete action that we're using for this is by default mapped to command backspace. So let's do that on the word custom. We can yank it back from the kill buffer with control Y, but if I put a space in and then paste, we can see that shortcuts is still the contents of our clipboard. Absolutely brilliant. Now let's say we're in the middle of this line and we want to put some padding around that first text view. Ordinarily, we go up, go to the end of the line, press return and start typing. But we don't have time for all that. Instead, what we now do is hit shift option return and just type padding. Now we want to make the word shortcuts red. So we go down to that line, option return, foreground color, red. None of this messing around, getting cursors to end of lines or beginning of lines and making some space for ourselves. It's all very quick indeed. And before I forget, you can also duplicate multiple lines and your clipboard will still remain clean. Once you start using these shortcuts, you will never go back. And although they're not the answer to everything, your coding efficiency will improve by 42. I hope you found that useful. If you did, let me know by mashing that like button and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. I love hearing from you, so if you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.